and welcome to Exchange for Media. With me today is the man who leads one of the biggest agencies across the world and who has uh, kept a very strong grip on all the big brands with his vision and good work. Please welcome Adam Gerhard, CEO of Mindshare. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for taking out time always for us. Pleasure. You've been very kind to us. So, you know, uh, six months ago, you were kind enough to be the keynote speaker at our uh, IFRM conclave. And I remember you said that uh, the agencies now need to focus on uh, growth, on good growth and not just growth, yeah. right? So uh, would you like to define what you mean by good growth? Yeah, sure. Um, I think um, one of the, the concepts that I was kind of talking about was the, the notion that um, for many years there, there was this um, misnomer almost that, that doing good and driving business were at odds. Um, and I think what we're starting to see actually is not only do those things need to coexist, but one can propel the other. And so it's not enough to do good. It's not enough just to focus on the business. You can do both at the same time. And so that's our vision for good growth. You also talk about, you know, so there, there, there are some 500 uh, companies, you know, uh, uh, fortune companies, which are uh, not really focusing on digital transition. Yeah. Huh? So you think that the trend has started to change or is it still the same? Yeah, I mean, so so what you're referring to is the, the fact that we think about 50% of Fortune 500 companies will no longer be there in the next two yeah. to three years yeah. because they can't transform fast enough. Um, we think that's only going to accelerate um, given the pressures and the changes that we're seeing in the landscape and the dynamics mm -hmm. around us, whether it's um, supply issues, whether it's hyperinflation, um, the socioeconomic world around us, um, we think that that's going to accelerate the need to transform dig digitally even more than what we've seen in the past. You've also been talking about, you know, uh, how uh, brands should uh, uh, work, you know, in, there should be more purpose to, yeah. you know, everything uh, that we do in marketing world. So if you can give me some examples of, you know, that brands that work with you or maybe with some other client, uh, with some other agency, uh, which which can define this whole thing of, you know, uh, brand of purpose. Yeah, so I think, first of all, we kind of have to start by understanding what we mean by purpose, because there's lots of different definitions out there. Um, the, the way that I like to describe it, and one of my favorite definitions, is where the brand or the business isn't the hero. The consumer is the hero. And I think that's a really important lens for us to think about what purpose actually means tomorrow, because brands can talk about how they're doing good in the world, but actually at the end of the day, it needs to be meaningful for consumers. Um, and when we can make them the focus, it becomes much more impactful. Um, and so when we look at some of the work that we're most proud of, um, we look at um, some, of the, some of the things like um, what Lifebuoy did with, with Swiggy in, in, you know, in, in India, um, where actually they were driving business, but also handing out samples um, every time something was delivered. It's pretty incredible. Or you take Dove um, as a really good example, where they continue to champion um, you know, self-esteem and female empowerment. Um, and the most recent work that we that we were part of um, that that uh, won a titanium award here at this event um, was uh, for the reverse selfie, helping women and young women um, understand the significance that social media actually has on their self esteem and their future their future image. Also, you know, I uh, wanted to understand from you that these days everything is pragmatic, everything is uh, run. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This technology which is running a lot of things. Yeah role of you know leaders in it you know because how is your agency now different from the other agency because everyone has technology yeah so i think more and more obviously the trend is going to continue um as, as long as the platform ecosystem continues to develop where we have the googles the ollies you know um dominating um we're going to continue to see things being driven programmatically tv becomes much more addressable digital outdoor becomes much more addressable and in turn you can buy it programmatically. That means we need to shift our focus to things that are um, providing much more strategic value with a strong underpinning of digital technology that empowers and, and enables that. Um, so two of the things that we're leaning into we think are going to be the next frontier of what brands and businesses need to think about but also what consumers are expecting. The first one is around um, data ethics. Um, not just how we're acquiring data, but actually what we're doing with it. 
Um, are we being intrusive? Are we um, invading their space? Are we actually treating their data with respect and, um, and understanding them by serving them better? Um, and the, the other area that is starting to quickly um, emerge um, is around the area of bias. And as we have more machines buying for us programmatically, um, we have to understand how we can be as objective, inclusive, diverse, and representative um, as humanly possible. Um, and when the algorithms that we use are written by men um, that happen to believe one thing or live in a certain place, um, there's unconscious or inherent bias written into much of the code that's in the world around us. So we have to start to think about how we can use technology for good. Um, and I think that will help accelerate this notion of good growth and, and the ability to actually deliver things that are meaningful to consumers, but also business impact at the same time. Yeah, I've been reading many of your interviews in the last few <laughs> months. <laughs> Thank now. you. So I'll tell you all, you talk about compassion, mm -hmm. you talk about consistency, sustainability, future focus, serve well the society, then you also talk about creating financial growth. Yeah. I mean, it, it looks straight from the Bible, you know, talk about so many good, good things <laughs> all the time. How do you do it all? Um, I, I think it, it goes back to the notion that actually there isn't a tension um, between business. Um, at the end of the day, it's not good, it is good growth. We're, you know, we're in a commercial enterprise Brands and businesses that we represent, for the most part, are, are in the same. It's a capitalistic world in that in that notion. Um, and so, if we if we start with the understanding that actually good and business and good and growth can go together, um, it serves as a beacon or a north star for everything that we do, the products that we create, the technology that we leverage, the people that we employ, um, and that becomes a really important filter for the way in which we think about how we need to show up differently. Um, and that for us is serving as a huge point of differentiation, even as we think about our own needs and the talent that we attract, um, who quite honestly want to stand for something more, want to do good in the world. And we're seeing that from younger employees entering the, the, the workforce for the first time, where they don't just want to be a cog in the machine anymore, and they want to do good in the world. So all of these things start to converge, and I wish it was... Um, you know, as noble as something that's biblical, um, but actually I think it is much more just about being human and understanding how we can support everyone that we serve, all of the constituents, um, and reconcile things that were thought to be opposing forces at one time. So, uh, you know, last two years have been very different from all of, for all of us, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of things changed. How has the industry changed? How has the business changed? How has the pitch changed? changed you know what what kind of brief do you get now yeah. or do you is it all the same or, or do you see some difference after pandemic I, first of all i think it depends on where you are in the world we're seeing wildly different views of things you know um, parts of china just came out of lockdown and again um, india obviously had a really difficult time for for a period but seems to have been rebounded incredibly strongly um, and then even in the U.S., there's huge disparities between whether you're in Los Angeles or Chicago. So okay. micro regions are starting to emerge. Um, but the big trends that kind of um, transcend all of those, um, I think, are the fact that we are um, a much more remote workforce, um, that um, we have to lean into flexibility and understanding how we can get the most from our, our, our talent base and our employees. Um, but at the same time, we are a culture that thrives. When we are together. No, but uh, this I understand. But you know how how has the business changed? You know, now you're saying that you know uh, uh, there are uh, very different kind of responses from different markets. Yep. So you know how is it affecting you as an agency? Well, I think I, I think the two go hand in hand to a certain extent. Our employees, we have to respond to them in, in a certain way in order to deliver on the business needs that that we have. Um, obviously, from a from a client perspective. The, the digital acceleration that happened through COVID, delivery services, bank, all of those sorts of things transformed the way in which we think about business and what we need to deliver in terms of product services, et cetera. So we've leaned much more into e-commerce. We're doubling down in terms of um, how we think about performance and outcomes, but again, not at the expense of brand. Um, there's the entire notion of short-term versus long-term is starting to define the skill sets, the capabilities, the 
products and services that, that we create. And I think the future then will start to be born out of some of the trends that actually stay um, and the ones that were just fleeting. Um, and so the rapid digital transformation agenda, um, the role of e-commerce, um, how we think about things like data ethics and what we are doing in the world. Um, and I think those are kind of the meta narratives that'll start to start to play out over the longer term. Anything you want to uh, say to your <coughs> Indian team? <laughs> I would say keep up the amazing work. Uh, one of the things that that we've noted here at, at Can in particular is the number of entries from India are up over 30% year and on we're year. We're doing very well this year. Really well. Okay. And so I would say innovation um, is is booming in India. Um, and so I would say to my colleagues and everyone out there, please keep it up because it serves as a North Star for the rest of the world. Thank you. And my last question is, how is it to be in Cannes the past two years? Uh, pretty amazing. I, I would have to say being together, being able to have these types of conversations, being inspired by the work again, um, is uh, there's a renewed sense of energy and purpose in what we do. And I couldn't be more pleased to be back. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you. Thank you.